I'm actually coming live from Frisco, one of the houses. Uh, we we're just uh, inspecting the foundations uh, prior to uh, my buyers buying this house. Uh, so we wanted to just go over it, the yearly uh, inspection you want to do on your foundation to keep up. Um, you know, Chris is here with me. Hey Chris, how's it going? What's up everybody? Hold on, let me switch it over buddy. How's it going brother? Hey, so importance of uh, getting like a yearly inspection, you want to talk about that? Uh, Just like a journal inspection? Yeah, I mean, you, you could do it yearly. Um, primarily, I want to talk about too, whenever you're just looking to, you're looking to buy a house and you just kind of want to like look at some of the things that I'm looking for. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing you're going to want to do is when you're walking around the exterior, just kind of keep a close eye on things as far as cracks go. Uh, that's kind of obvious that you would you would think about that, but you need to think about what's uh, gonna be a regular crack and what's gonna be more something that's more severe. So this is a relatively new house. We're not gonna find too much on this one. Uh, you can see if you do have stone veneer on the house that you're looking at, uh, you're gonna almost always see, even immediately, even if the house is brand new, cracks start to form in this mortar right there. That's just a little bit of settlement and uh, maybe just not the perfect mixture rate on that mortar, but uh, that's not a problem. Uh, well, you'll also look at your brick veneer, especially on older houses. You're probably going to see some cracks if you think that there's a problem. Some cracks, if they follow that mortar line, it's, it's not as big of a deal. If you see cracks that are going through that brick, that's more of an intense crack and that's more something that you want to pay attention to. So you're going to kind of go around the outside of the house and just get a feel for where the cracks are happening and, and what you would think, like which, why would that crack form that way as far as which, how is the house moving. So. An eighth of an inch generally is not something too bad, but once it starts getting more, uh, you definitely don't do that. If you do purchase a house that already has cracks on it, you're going to want to go ahead and measure them just to start out with, and then you can kind of come back and see if, if it is moving. That's the big thing is how if it's moving and then how fast is it moving. So Chris is going over like, you know, what do you want to look off for? Um, you already purchased the house, you're living in the house, and you want to just make sure you're keeping up with, keeping up with your foundation. Uh, and that's what we're actually doing. It's just a minor foundation inspection. Um, so you want to go ahead and continue on. Sometimes you'll see just natural little settlement cracks, little diagonal cracks that come out of windows are pretty natural. Again, not, not something you would worry too much about. You're going to be looking for more significant cracks, uh, something that's going to be happening kind of in a particular area. Uh, you just want to try to get a feel what's going on. Again, you can look at all these cracks. If you see a lot, you know that you're going to want somebody to come out here and inspect, but even if you don't see that many cracks, I can't tell you like how many houses I've been to, and I didn't really find enough cracks to warrant calling an actual foundation specialist to come out. But whenever I go and measure it with actually in it, how the, the foundation is actually moving, mean, I've actually had some foundation repairs on houses that you would have not known. And then just the way that it was settling kind of forced it to not have too many cracks. But this is what I was talking about. This is my particular equipment. Uh, there's a few different things out there. These are altimeters. They're using a liquid that goes through the hose uh, or gas that basically uh, determines the differences. So I can tell you within just tenths of an inch uh, where your foundation is. So what I do personally, if you feel like there's a problem in your inspection, I can come out to your house or if you're buying a house, up here, then another one's up down here where you've got some heaving maybe on the sides. If you see that irregularity, then you know you're going to get more cracking and you can have more of a problem with your foundation. And that's something that this is going to help you with a lot. Uh, the other, the, the, the second thing that they're really good at is it's really important to have your numbers, right? So when you first buy a house, you get these numbers that I would give you or that you can get with this type of machine. Uh, just make sure if you do hire an inspector and it's not me, make sure that he's got this type of equipment. Like I said before, they won't know. But If you're gonna, if it warrants repair right then, or if you know you have those numbers, you can kind of use that as a reference of probably in five years it's gonna be foundation work. So do I want to sell it now? Cool. So, so like maybe like in a um, few simple things that they can actually do to keep up. At, is there telltale signs of uh, uh, like foundation going bad, or is time to like actually have the foundation inspection done, or have like at least yeah. have you out there to do like you know homeowners inspection? done you know uh yeah i mean you would, you would always you, you know you would always want to get an inspection obviously you know you're buying or even selling a house like a seller inspection so you can kind of see what you're getting into uh 
um, what things you're going to have to fix. Uh, but yeah, if, if, you, if it's something that you notice problems, you know, it, it all depends on the particular house. You can have a house, houses that half the neighborhood might be good, half of them might be really bad. It depends on the builder, it depends on the house, it depends on the excavation of the soil before. There's a lot of factors that go into if your foundation is going to be up. Well, all right, folks. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring you guys a little bit of information. Just try to... Oh, sorry about that. Just try to kind of like keep an uh, eye on your house. House uh, actually is just like a living, breathing thing. You have to keep up with it maintenance wise. Make sure you change your filters. Make sure you have your AC guy out there checking right before the summer or right after the summer. Uh, your AC unit, same thing goes for your foundation. Uh, if you need any help, Chris is here. His number is in the uh, uh, description below. Uh, his contact, all the contact. Uh, you know, just uh, kind of keep up with him on a social media. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, every, what, uh, you have a uh, sorry, I just had one more real quick thing. So as far as the maintenance on your foundation, if you've got sprinkler systems, use them on a regular basis. Yeah, you that's don't a great want, point. You don't want your, your soil, it's okay if it's always wet, it's okay if it's always dry. In Texas, it's gonna be back and forth. So you wanna make it a constant. You wanna make it a constant moisture so that way that soil's not moving, which means your foundation can stay in one spot. So awesome, awesome water. advice, Chris. Thank you so much. Just like uh, Chris said, you know, make sure you keep up with your house. Make sure you have sprinklers going. It, it is important. I know uh, water bills can be go high in Texas, but we have to. The foundation um, needs to be like you know, is gonna be a, lot higher than a lot more <laughs> higher than that. All right, guys. Well, it was a small tip um, that I wanted to give everybody. I hope everybody having a great afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.